very good evening to you. I am Ryan Broom with the Tuesday, September, November 7th edition of the CBC Evening News. In our top story, Commerce Minister Donald Innes has hit back hard at reports that Barbados's international business and financial services sector was highlighted in a global investigation headed by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists called the Paradise Papers. Barbados has apparently been named among what the document calls the world's most secretive countries and there are implications of the island being a tax haven. However, Minister Innes contends it is easy for those looking in to try to beat up on Barbados. With those Paradise Papers, you get a lot more of that happening. People get excited. Um, you know, they like to pick on politicians and wealthy individuals in their own country and seek to trace where they are um, engaging and investing. But I am satisfied that the majority of the investment that such entities and individuals make are done in a very legitimate manner, designed to protect assets and to grow the assets around the world. Speaking on the sidelines of the opening ceremony of the BNSI's SI's Regional Training on International Standards at Radisson Aquatica, Minister Innes st stoutly defended the reputation of Barbados's international business sector. for Barbados, a, a sizable cadre of well-trained and competent professionals who service the international business and financial services sectors. Lawyers, accountants, tax advisors, corporate service administrators, people who really and truly pay a lot of attention to their own reputation as professionals and the reputation of their firms. We also have banks in Barbados. Canadian primarily and other banks here that themselves are well regulated externally but also part of an international banking group that really you know, adhere to the highest possible standards and, and can be very tough to deal with. Health Minister John Boyce is adamant that information remains a critical tool to addressing any public health crisis. He says Barbados recognizes that Zika is a disease of international significance requiring special action. And he says the country has been working with local, regional and international partners to ensure the safety of the population. Mr. Boyce was speaking during a regional Zika tech camp. Local public health professionals and government officials involved in health communications are among the dozens taking part in the camp, which is aimed at increasing their knowledge of technologies so they will better communicate with the population about Zika and other epidemics. Social media based surveillance while not being a replacement for traditional surveillance, can be used as an enhancement, thereby serving to improve capacity for early detection of outbreaks. Since the World Health Organization's declaration on February 1st, 2016, of the Zika associated neurological anomalies, including microcephaly, as a public health emergency of international there has been increased attention on the Zika virus disease, its spread, and its impact. Ms. Boyce says guidelines have been developed and updated for testing and monitoring of pregnant women, along with children born to mothers with Zika. Efforts are also continuing to remove potential breeding sites for mosquitoes. Psychiatric Hospital has devised a school-based mental health program which it hopes to start rolling out over the next two years. It comes against the background of recent incidents of students being violent towards teachers. Acting Hospital Director David Leacock says given these types of issues, a deeper understanding of what causes a student to be violent against a teacher is needed, noting that it is usually a, syst a systemic problem. He says the program will begin with an assessment of every child in the schools. It's a three-tiered system where we're looking at identifying within the schooling system um, a category of clients that we, or persons that we say that are perhaps at high risk for experiencing mental health issues and then putting programs in place at the school level to address those. Um, at the lower, lower tier is just broad-based mental health education. So we're making all students aware of what mental health is, how it affects them and what they do to maintain their, their mental health and their mental wellness. Um, at the highest tier is what we currently call a child guidance clinic where persons who already have mental health issues or those who may develop severe mental health issues then actually have an avenue as far as persons assist them in the recovery process. 
Mr. Lika acknowledges that manpower to execute the program could be a problem, but he says they have looked very closely at the human resources needs. All of our community consultants had agreed to take on a number of schools. There was two or three per, per consultant. And then all of the community health nurses were also assigned to a school. From the hospital standpoint, we were going to augment the staff into the community services so that the clinics that they ran were manned by other personnel to allow these um, practitioners a greater scope as far as health education and promotion are concerned. So we did actually have a plan in place towards addressing the issue of human resources when it came to putting the plan in place. In other news, the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth has been in the forefront of uh, unifying Barbadians starting from the community level. This is from Acting Minister Steve Blackett as he delivered the feature address at last evening's Sajikor Life Incorporated Lighting Ceremony. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth has been in the vanguard when it comes to building a community spirit and social cohesion and unity. Through the Youth Division, we have been intervening in troubled communities using a program called Sit Unity. This activity brings together communities by meaningful dialogue. Various sporting disciplines are used to bring together that and there has been a measure of success. Following his address, the lights were switched on by Carson Small, who has been described as a volunteer who has given selflessly to communities and continues to make a contribution to the nation. Speaking earlier, Chief Operations Officer at Sajikora Life, Edward Clark, shared his vision for a revitalized Bridgetown. He believes the establishment of a city campus by the University of the West Indies could spark a transformation of the capital. We can engage students, visitors, workers, free Wi-Fi access for ease of communication and business, more green spaces to enjoy the heritage sites or simply to enjoy the sunshine and fresh air. The many vacant buildings that we see around Bridgetown and the vacant lots coming into the city especially those owned by the government of Barbados, can be transformed and used to house new businesses to cater to the needs of those converging on Bridgetown. Local tourism officials have signed a major deal with the United Kingdom's third largest cruise line, Morella Cruises. It will see the line's newest and largest ship, Explorer, sail its first ever winter season in Barbados and, according to officials, bring an additional 60% more visitors to the island. It will also be joined by Marabella Celebration, which already operates itineraries around the, around the Caribbean. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated, William Griffith, describes the deal as an integral part of the island's strategy for maintaining its strength in cruise tourism. There has been a lot of speculation following some cruise itinerary scheduling changes due to the neighboring ports being damaged during the 2017 hurricane season. Our agreement with Morella doesn't just have implications for increased revenue, but also refutes any misconceptions that Barbados is not a good place to welcome visitors. We look forward to our continued partnership with TUI, and, and we trust that we've embarked on a very successful venture. Mr. Griffith explains that under an agreement reached last year, the Morella discovery, using Barbados as a home port, generated about $12.7 million US dollars in income for the local economy across the sector. We are projecting the additional vessels economic value to Barbados to be in excess of 16 million uh, during that winter period of 1819, and it tops last year's 12 million US dollar performance. We're also currently in negotiation to increase the number of hotels participating in the program as well. And we anticipate that there will be well over 20 hotels who will form part of this new program with the increased home port and experience. More than 20 people escaped the near-mass casualty, casualty situation of the, on the Porter St. James section of Highway 1 after a public service vehicle, a white Toyota van, and a grey Swift collided. It happened just after 12.30 in the afternoon. According to reports, the PSV was traveling toward Bridgetown, while the other two were headed to Spitestone. Upon impact, however, the white van was turned in the opposite direction and contained fragments of the yellow PSV inside. Greg Richards, a rayside construction employee, was just two feet away. Early day under the tree, just getting a little rest at lunch, and all of a sudden just hear this collision and it just bumped, you know? Okay. Yeah, it just jumped me out of my sleep. Okay, so you were afraid at the Nah, I <laughs> didn't afraid. It just jumped me. The bus stop was nearly flattened and its controversial stop RH littering sign left barely standing. Eyewitnesses say a man had been there just two minutes 
before the collision. The PSV was driven by Rashan Bourne of King's Court Lodge Road, Christchurch, and conducted by Wayne Cozier of Waterhall Land Eagle Hall, St. Michael. They both reported that all 24 passengers were unhurt and disembarked to seek alternative transport. The driver of the Swift, a hired vehicle, was transported to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, while the man driving the white van stood extremely shaken from the incident. The condition of the injured person is not yet known. Kareem Smith, CBC News. Thanks, Kareem. We will take a short break here, but we'll be back with more news. It started with my love for making things. That became a business. And when I wanted to expand, I chose a partner that could help me build on my vision. A partner that made growing my business easier with fewer steps. That's banking that starts with me. It starts with you, Scotiabank. Hey there. Yes, you. Yes, flow customers. You've topped up, signed up, paid your bill on time and in full. Now you can win over a quarter of a million dollars in cash and prizes. It's time to play. Let your family flow. You can win smart TVs, cell phones, cash, and more weekly. Visit www.discoverflow.co or see price for details. Cable and wireless terms and conditions apply. Help support the restoration efforts for the hundreds of thousands affected by catastrophic hurricanes. Donate to the Red Cross Hurricane Relief account at any branch of the following. CIBC First Caribbean, account number 10011163436. First Citizens, 500-900-0588. RBC Royal Bank, 2100573, and Republic Bank, 01804-153-1001. Money's raised will be sent to the International Red Cross for its restoration work for affected persons. Appeal closes 30th November 2017. Persons wishing to post checks should make these out to Red Cross Hurricane Relief Appeal Account and post to Barbados Red Cross Society. P.O. Box 300 Bridgetown or hand delivered to the Red Cross Warren's headquarters. The Barbados Red Cross and commercial banks on behalf of the victims of catastrophic hurricanes thank all persons and businesses for their contributions. If you are diabetic, then monitoring your food intake is vital. Join the doctors this Friday and let them keep you on track. CBC Presents, brought to you with the compliments of Blue Cerna. Hunger Smart. Welcome back. Well, over 2,000 students from Barbados and across the Caribbean have benefited from training under the CARICOM Education for Employment program. That regional program was implemented by Colleges and Institutes Canada and has been supporting Caribbean educational and training institutes moving towards a more responsive, demand-driven TVET system that equips learners with skills for the jobs of the future. Canada's High Commissioner to Barbados and the OECS, Her Excellency Marie Legault, is pleased with some of the program's results. I've seen that there's almost 2,000 students that have graduated from, from, uh, from the various programs, so it means that we have 2,000 new um, well, um, people that can embrace the new technologies that are out there and, and help the countries in which they are and the region. But I was also very happy to see that 56% of them are women, which is great because, you know, especially in EFE and in uh, technology as well, this is not a field that we have a lot of women. The High Commissioner's comments came as she was speaking at a plat presentation to representatives of technical and vocational institutionals from Jamaica, Guyana, St. Lucia, Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. She also expressed concern that technical education has been ignored for far too long. Of course, we, we all know that, I mean, I'm preaching to the converted here. I think that uh, technical vocational training is something that is extremely important and that we have been neglecting a little bit around the world uh, for, for a period of time 
was not as sexy as other uh, ways of learning before, but I think we've come to recognize that this is extremely important today. I mean, in the field of technology, IT, uh, artificial intelligence, climate change, technology, this is what we need. We need technology. Over the next three days, practitioners in standard setting from around the region will gather at the Radisson Aquatica for the Barbados National Standards Institute's training for the Joint Technical Committee of the International Organi Organization for Standardization and the International Electrotechnical Commission. The topic of the conference is general requirements for the competence of testing and cut and calibration laboratories. A technical officer of the CARICOM Re Regional Organization for Standards and Quality, Stephen Farquharson, says his organization has undertaken a Caribbean cooperation for accreditation, which has a mandate to assist, facilitate, and coordinate accreditation with all conformity assessment bodies across the region. This was in recognition that the developed markets across the world set rules and they have embraced the international accreditation system. Any player that can't meet these rules are not going to be able to do business in these markets. During the featured address, Commerce Minister Donald Innes stressed the importance of quality and standards to Barbados' economic growth, hence his proposal to government of a national quality policy. There are five pillars upon which a national quality policy must be built. These include standards, metrology, testing, certification, and of course, accreditation. And Barbados commits to working on all five of these pillars uh, with his to ensure that at the end of the day we have a national quality policy not just a document but one that is really manifested in all that we do in our economy and our society in other news if one constituency council has its way barbados will soon have its first community radio station and recording studio and if all goes well for the St. Michael Northwest Constituency Council and its chairman Ricardo Williams the facility will be built and outfitted by Christmas Mr. Williams outlined the plans during a press conference at the council's headquarters in Deacons, where the station and studio will be located. He says the ultimate aim is to make recording available and affordable to all communities and provide a steady stream of information as well. We take in thousands and thousands of dollars every year from Barbados and sending overseas to artists that we don't even know. And local guys here eating rocks and wilts and recording. I mean, like we don't understand that the, the rock is copyright and what are royalties and the amount of families that can benefit from it so it's our intention to have a registration that plays a hundred percent local music only local music well the studio is just one of the programs being executed by the Con constituency council chairman of the environmental health committee cecil gill says a planned community walkthrough is part of a bigger strategy to get residents to change how they think about the environment. He says they are targeting the neighborhoods of Brandon's and Birds River, where the houses are close and residents have been complaining about rats and mosquitoes. Chairman Williams says the way residents dispose of their garbage is also a concern and it has been a hard sell. We've got to create this culture now, not just taking your garbage from in your house and putting it outside. And we're not on a garbage truck, but from inside the house starts separating it. It, it's, it will be done with education. Again, this is where radio station, community radio station comes in, because this is something that you're going to be talking about every day. Old habits die hard. And most people unconsciously just put anything in a plastic bag and put it out. Most people. And now we see the harm that the plastic bags are doing. Now, the council is also planning a fish fry to help raise funds for the studio, as well as a series of children's Christmas concerts. Well, we'll take a break here, but we'll take a look at stories making headlines across the region when we return. Barbados, it's gonna be lit. FAS 7 Star, Hennessy and Yellow present Hennessy Artistry. Featuring international superstar, Barris Hammond. Movado, Cosmana Fox, Little Rick, and Nikita. And for the first time in Barbados, Tori Lanes. 
hosted by Vane and Peter Coppin. The Hennessy experience of a lifetime. Everyone falls in love sometimes. Hennessy Artistry, December 2nd, Kensington Oval. Welcome to the weekend. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. Flaunt your taste responsibly. I would like to get my father a bike and my mother a bed. I would like a Samsung TV for my mommy. I want to get my mommy a tablet. I would like to get my dad a barbecue because he likes to cook fish. Join us from November 16th to 19th, 2017 for the Barbados Food and Rum Festival, where acclaimed Barbadian chefs and mixologists are joined by Chef Jean-Georges of the U.S., Chef Tom Akins of the U.K., Chef Chris De La Rosa of Canada to create dining experiences to delight the senses. Visit TicketPal.com and all TicketPal locations to get your tickets. And visit FoodandRum.com for more information. Most Caribbean countries are open for business despite the devastating hurricanes that ripped through the region earlier this year. This from Secretary General of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Hugh Riley. He was responding to a question from CNN, CNN's Richard Quest during the ongoing world travel market. Quest suggested that visitors might be turned off from visiting the region by even the slightest amount of damage to one of the islands. But Mr. Riley says that need not be the case. We're saying that the experience is still exciting and romantic and exotic and all of that. All of us have gone to some place where they've seen a sign saying under construction. So if you've got 100 rooms, right, and 30 of them are, are under construction or under repair, but 70 are good, come for the 70. Mr. Riley also outlined what the industry needs now to help stay on track after the hurricanes. We need funding. Here at World Travel Market, we are going from booth to booth to tell the governments of the Caribbean that we need to pool our resources to get a massive campaign out to say that the Caribbean is open for business. That's what we need to do. In Dominica, several communities are still without water weeks after the passive passage of Hurricane Irma. The Dominica Water and Sewage Company Limited is working to restore full water supply in affected communities. Chief Engineer Doasco Magnus Williams says most of their systems were heavily impacted by the hurricane. He says in the long term, the company is moving to rebuild its water system, making it climate resilient. Clearly, with climate change, we expect that those kinds of impacts will become more frequently. And we do not want that every two years we're going to be in the same situation again. So clearly, there's a need to rebuild, as they say, to build back better and to add more climate resilience in whatever we do. Um, so clearly one of the things that must be done is we should really study our systems better and do better designs. Um, so we will need to bring in the necessary expertise to do the proper hydrological studies, look at our various catchments, look at the vulnerabilities that may be posed um, from, let's say, flash floodings. Because one of the issues that we've had is that since most of our infrastructure lies in watersheds and in waterways where they are exposed to um, boulders and heavy turbulent waters. And General Manager Bernard Etinoff, meanwhile, says tremendous strides have been made in restoring water to affected communities. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen a few more areas receiving water, such as St. Joseph, Meru, and um, Layu have received water. Um, we have restored water in the Lapland community. Um, all of the Kalinago territory is now receiving pipe on water again from the Wasco. So the number of new areas that have been covered over the last couple of weeks, we are at the point now where we are just over 61% in terms of coverage island-wide, which means that about 14,000 of our 23,000 customers are receiving pipe on water from the Wasco. Canadian travelers hoping to vacation in Dutch St. Martin this winter will have to make alternative plans after hurricane damage forts forced several airlines to suspend service for the season. Air Canada issued an advisory on its website saying that damage caused by hurricanes Irma and Maria has resulted in its suspension of all flights to the Caribbean island and Puerto Rico. 
Affected customers can obtain a refund. Transat also suspended service for the season, which runs from December 23rd to April 28th. WestJet, meanwhile, says it will resume service to the Caribbean island in May. And electricity is likely to be fully restored across the British Virgin Islands about a month earlier than anticipated. It was initially projected that residents would not see full restoration until 2018 because of the widespread destruction of the territory's electric electrical infrastructure caused by Hurricane Irma. Deputy General Manager of the BVI Electricity Company, Henry Creek, says the success is due to assistance from linesmen brought in from countries across the Caribbean and other areas. And in Bermuda, Premier of Bermuda, David Burt, has pledged to aggressively defend the island's reputation after the release of millions of files that painted it as a tax haven. David Burt made it clear Bermuda is not a place to hide money. The Premier says he had conducted a series of interviews with international media following the release of files from Bermudan founded law firm Appleby as part of the Paradise Papers leak reported on Monday. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and almost 100 media organizations around the world examined 13.4 million files from offshore law firms and company registries in offshore jurisdictions. The files include financial statements, emails, and loan arrangements going back decades. Around half of the documents came from a cyber attack on Appleby. Mr. Burke states Bermuda has nothing to hide and he will conduct as many interviews as were needed to continue to set the record straight. Well, as part of continued efforts to support Antigua and Barbuda in post-hurricane relief and rebuilding efforts, the government of China is handing over checks amounting to 55,000 U.S. dollars. Chinese Ambassador Wang Jimin says the donation has come from China's embassy in St. John's. China has provided emergency cash and disaster relief goods since Hurricane Irma struck in September. And Prime Minister Gaston Brown has expressed his government's appreciation for the assistance. Well, a quick, a quick look into the world of sports is just ahead, but before we get there, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Insurance is the most widely used method of financing risk. Many persons only appreciate the importance of insurance when they suffer loss or damage to their personal property or possessions. Cooperators General Insurance, ensuring you are protected during this hurricane season.